Hello everyone. Today we are going to um, do a demonstration video on how to properly flash, set up, and get ready to install your F3 Omnibus. Um, these recently become very available online. Um, I think I even paid like $22 for a, a built-in OSD all-in-one Omnibus flight controller. But um, it's the one we're talking about, the Flip32 F3 Omnibus. I bought this one from Ready to Fly Quads. Um, it all looks good. Um, so far, I haven't opened the package yet. But we soon shall find out. There's some cool things to mention here. They're giving you warnings down here at the bottom with this 5 volt and the VBAT. Um, you got to be careful. What they're trying to tell you is you really got to be careful with the 5 volt and the uh, VBAT. If you tag them both and you bridge over and then you also connect in with your with your VBAT, you will be sending 5 volts over or your 5 volts is going to be really high. Um, just to let you know, you know, definitely. Um, another thing you notice here, if you're going to do S bus PPM, notice right away, you are at 3. So when you go into the programming, S bus and PPM is you are at 3. Okay, um, pretty much everything looks like it's good to go. You have your, your LED control, your WS, you got uh, your buzzer, VBAT, current sensor, RSSI, ground, your 5 volt. Um, even up to eight motors. Obviously, I'm not going to be doing eight motors today. I'm just going to be doing four. So I'm just going to use these four over here and leave the S bus alone because I'm going to go in through the Spectrum satellite port. Um, so let me go ahead and get started. And we'll, we'll go ahead and, and see uh, how, how long this takes us to do. One thing I like to do before I even start is to check for... Just to make sure there's no shipping damage, there's nothing crushed, there's no connectors that are messed up, there's no broken pins, frayed out soldering, any shorts that I can try to, to find right away. Um, at this time, it all looks good. This is my video port here. Um, also, I do want to note, I um, hope you guys can see this. You got two buttons here. This is a trigger. And this is your bootloader, okay? Um, so you don't have to short pins anymore. They left us a nice little button for us to go ahead and do our flash. So uh, yeah, I, at this point, I would say this one, nice little gold connector there. Maybe that'll help speed up the USB and black box. But um, yeah, you get your black box SD card reader. You'll be able to record as much data as you want to make your eyes strain through looking at little mountains. Um, yeah, it all looks to be all in one. That one works. So let's go ahead and hook it up to beta flight and see if we can. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this thing a try. I'm already hooked up to my USB. I've already got my beta flight. It's up to date. It's up here on the, on the screen, as far as I know. So what I'm going to do is, is when I connect right here, I'm going to go ahead and push the bootloader pad and hold this bootloader pad. Again, it's the second one. It's the one closest to this connection block right here. I'm just going to push it and hold that button. Make sure that I'm holding it. It's kind of small here for my big hand. And then I'm going to connect. That put, where to save myself time, curiosity, whatever. Um, it sees it, you know, it is an omnibus. Choose the closest version for omnibus. I'm going to take the new one, February 27th. That's pretty new. Okay, uncheck, uncheck, uncheck. I'm going to load the firmware from online and flash away. As you noticed, it's it's pretty quick. Maybe it's that gold connector. I'm not too sure, but it worked pretty darn good. Okay, I am gonna go ahead and close clean. I'm gonna disconnect the flight controller. 
open clean flight again, beta flight again. I'm going to reconnect the Omnibus to beta flight. It has a new port now, and I'm going to connect. And voila zing! I am now current and up to date with the uh, flight controller and everything. It is the current newest newest version that I can have to make sure that I'm up to date. I'm going to just sample the gyro here, make sure that it's working. Um, definitely seems to be a bit off. There we go. Reset the axis and everything. It never works right anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and start down the list. Okay, I got my setup. I'm going to go to ports. USB VCP is turned on. I'm going to go to UART number three. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn on serial RX. Save and reboot. Connect again. Good configuration. I am using multi-shot. Um, the reason why I'm using multi-shot is no more than. It is the highest analog protocol for ESCs that you can currently have, and I just want to write over the airs inside the program. You know, it's nice, easy, they're affordable. You know, they're not D-shot, no, but there's some features in multi-shot that I like better than D-shot. Okay, I have not done a calibration yet for the ESC, so these I'm not going to mess with until they reset. I'm just going to browse over. Oh, here we go. A PPM RX input. Nope. I am going to be Spectrum Satellite DSMX. DSMX will be 2048. DSM2 will be 1024. I do not want to log my RSI. However, right here, this is really important for you guys right here. And, and this is another reason why I definitely wanted to use D-Shot so that you can see the difference in what I'm talking about here. This is your, your, your gyro update frequency is set to, to 8K. Okay, now your PID loop is set to 2K. Your gyro is going to ghost the PID loop with written commands 4 to 1 by that command. Okay, so at no point do you ever, ever, ever want to have your gyro frequency and your PID loop frequency different from each other. They need to be the same, okay? This this now removes ghosting. This 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 will remove some some noise that you hear, uh, some oscillations that you, you could just, you can just never really get out. This is about as clean as it gets. Okay, enabling gyro 32 camp 32k sampling mode. Um, for one, this gyro doesn't support 32k, so I don't even want to mess with it. It's only an F3, it's not an F4 flight controller, so my little bit of speed and stuff in there, it just, for this here, this is where I want to be. If I want to go 32K, I'll go to race flight. I like this at 8 and 8, with multi-shot enabled. Okay, so, accelerometer, it's up to you. I usually turn it off because, you know, I don't want to be able, you know, to have any, anything up for racing. My black box. Um, I'm not going to use black box for a while. Uh, I've already know what my PID should be really close to, and everything is going to be brand new. I don't have any current problems that I know of. Um, but yeah, I am going to leave on OSD. Another big benefit, which I went into a little bit before, was why I chose the Omnibus. I've been having a heck of a time keeping the MakeTech Hub OSD and the Red Rotor. And th those are some really finicky and, and delicate circuits, and I really don't understand why they decided to put those delicate circuits on with the the crazy power and and, and, and the and, and the voltage spikes that come off the ESCs being on the same board, you know. Um, anyways, I want to try it this time by being on the flight controller, not being on the actual PDV. It seems to make sense to me. Um, there's going to be uh, some other modifications and things that I'm going to do unique so that I can isolate some other issues and things that I've had in the past and, and just give this a whole new try. But again, I'm just going to leave OSD on and we'll get there. 
my PID tuning tab, okay? I already know this right here is very light. Um, the, at 44 and 40, I know that this, no, that this nose is gonna drop. I wanna be around 55 and 50. I'll leave it at 49 for now. And this one in my, in my pitch, I'm gonna have it 64 and 55, 56, somewhere in there, okay. I'm not even gonna mess with anything else right now. You know, no, no TPA, there's nothing to TPA. You just leave all this stuff alone, okay? I'm gonna say. Next will be the receiver. Right now we just opened up the box so we don't even have a receiver plugged into it yet. The modes. We all know that the mode we're definitely going to need right now is going to be R. So we're going to go ahead, put our slider in there, and hit save. There's no way to test it because we have not hooked up a receiver yet. The build is not complete. Motors. The build is not complete, but this is where you'll go to sync the motors. Uh, make sure the props are never on. You know, this is this this little comment here isn't 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 for fun. This is serious stuff. OSD. Okay. This is interesting because this is kind of like the second time maybe that I've ever even seen this this data flight OSD menu because my stuff isn't compatible with it within the past. So I know for me. I really want some real basic information up there. I don't know if I want to know all the, you know, you know all the little details and horizons and vertical risers and everything like that. You know, I I, I don't think that's for me. But I'm gonna say that for racing, and and casual, you know, freestyle for me, I'm gonna get rid of the artificial horizon, the horizon stabilizers. I'm gonna get rid of the on time. 